So I get the question a lot. Why do you focus so much on Venezuela? Well, for my part, I was a Spanish linguist in the military and spent time down in the region. And so I have a bit of a, I wouldn't say expertise in it, but if I'm going to speak about something on YouTube, it should probably be something where I have some on-the-ground experience. The real question that you need to be asking yourself is, why was the current administration so focused on this? Because through all of the election and all of the promises and all of the bluster, you didn't hear much about this. But within the first hundred days, the current administration reaffirmed their commitment to continuing the President Obama era policy of sanctioning Venezuela and hired a Goldman Sachs banker to do it, Steve Mnuchin. And you can look that up. I actually did a video on it quite a while ago. That it was a first 100 days policy. You see, the reason is not just oil. Down here, it is believed that the lost city of El Dorado exists somewhere. And there is a lot of gold in Venezuela. In fact, they have a fourth largest gold mine in the world. And currently, in the news, there is a story about a company called Crystalex that has won this award from uh, a judge to seize Citgo, a uh, PDVSC, PDVSA asset in the United States, to satisfy this arbitration claim. Now, I know a lot of the acolytes of the pill popper in West Palm sitting on his uh, Attila the Hun chair in front of the golden EIB microphone, and the folks who worship Mr. Hannity always love to come out and chant their nationalization is theft, nationalization is theft, without knowing anything about why Venezuela had to send in the National Guard and take control of these mines. And I'm going to reveal that for you here in today's video. You see, what happened here was just the end of a long string of U.S. businesses after World War II going down to this region where there was pretty much no law, hiring slave labor, cutting these deals with the leadership of the country, promising huge profits, and then somewhere down in the fine print, page 385, there was some little line that uh, excluded on payday, of course, the Venezuelan people from their share. And it was oil, and it was minerals, and it was food, and it gold was just another one of them. And they were continually being screwed over time and time and time again by big U.S. corporations. And we see that here in something we covered before. This is uh, the presidency of Romulo Betancourt. In 1941, before Acción Democrática's entry into policymaking, those are the evil socialists, Venezuela received 85 million bolivars from oil taxes out of a total value of 691 million bolivars from their own resources. That's what they got. And this was 41. And they tried to work with the oil companies, the gold extractors, to do something that would not only allow them to make a profit, but also benefit the Venezuelan people as well, which is what these companies were promising. These were basically just giant versions of traveling salesmen, like we saw in this country in the 20s and 30s, making all sorts of promises, taking the money, and then disappearing. And this was just standard business practice back then. Screw over whoever you could screw over for however much money as you can get away with. Caveat emptor. And we, of course, know who these people are. We don't have to uh, name them. We can just show you who they are. So in this story that uh, now, today, was revealed that Crystal X is going to start seizing assets in the United States, We'll go back here to this Las Cristinas gold mine and reveal something for you that I don't think you probably knew. You see, 
the area down there that they think has all the gold was originally discovered by a woman and her husband and a pilot. And it has been in legal limbo since the 60s. It's been called the Curse of Las Cristinas, or the Curse of El Dorado. Uh, Culver Lemon was the uh, a resident of the United States, uh, not a Spanish speaker. Uh, in 63, they gave her the concessions, lots 4, 5, 6, and 7, in 64 for a 24-year, 25 year period. Um, these are also the people that discovered Angel Falls. And so it goes through this long list of who owned what and who was going to do what with what. And finally, this, jar, this giant Canadian mining company called Placer Dome shows up and says they're going to fix everything. And they're going to start the mine up and it's going to work fine for everybody. Well, it didn't, because gold prices went down, and they decided, no, we're not going to do it now, because we can't make any money. And they're, uh, they sold their stake, the 70-30 stake, for $50 to Vanessa Ventures in just a uh, slap in the face to the government of Venezuela, so the people didn't make any money. So this was 2002. And this was when Chavez said enough. We're enough with the big U.S. corporations and by U.S. corporations. This is what I'm talking about. We are going to take control of this and we're going to get the gold out of the ground for the people of Venezuela. Well, that did not sit well at all with Crystal X, who is now the current owner of the mine. And so Vanessa Ventures went to the uh, international court and tried to get some kind of an arbitration, some kind of a dealing, and threatened Venezuela with um, the World Bank withholding loans if they didn't uh, fork over the cash, um, all sorts of things. And this has been standard practice, that if these companies or these companies, these countries down here, didn't kowtow to these big U.S. corporations, that they would bankrupt them, just like they're doing now in Venezuela. And it says here, Thus fearing retribution from the World Bank, not surprisingly, the Venezuelan Supreme Court decided in extremis to re-examine Vanessa's compensation claim and consider the company's demands for financial compensation. Yet, due to the resilient popularity of President Chavez's 21st century socialism, for the most part, Vanessa Ventures' remaining compensation claims against the Venezuelan government, for the most part, have either been dropped or delayed. After the mine was effectively nationalized in 2002, Crystal X Corporation was then granted exploitation rights to the gold mine by the Venezuelan government. But to this day, the mining company has still not received all permits needed to open, dig in, haul out, and run the mine. Of course, because that would require investment. And so that's why Crystal X is suing. Because they think that they're not going to make enough money. Even with gold prices being what they are now. So, strangely enough, Crystal X is owned by a certain person. Or I should say the director of Crystal X is a certain person. It's a fellow named Mark J. Oppenheimer. Financial advisor, smart biotech. And he's kind of a spooky fella. Uh, principal of the Preferred Investment Solutions Corp. Managing owner of Kenmar Global Trust and managing owner of Diversified Futures. Uh, shows a corporate headquarters of 2 Bergman Street, Rehovot, Israel. And, oh yeah, by the way, 1995 to present, director, Crystal X International Corporation. So, now you know the rest of the story. There's a certain group of people out there that for a very long time have gotten their way in the world. And when you come between them and their money, or what they think they're owed, they will do whatever they think they need to do to get their money or what they're owed. And if that means creating havoc in a country, hiring people to kill the leaders of countries, they'll do it. And I don't think I have to uh, convince any of you of that. We've seen it over and over and over again. This is just the first country down there that said, you know what, bring your worst. If you want to burn it down, fine. We'll burn it down, 
but we'll watch it burn before we hand it over to you willingly. And this is the story of what's happening in Venezuela. They had the audacity to say, you know what? We'll work with you, but if you try to screw us over, we're not going to allow ourselves to be screwed over. And if you go to international courts, that's what it's going to take. And if you want to come here and you want to start a war, war over it, fine. We're going to fight and we're going to stand up. We'll hand out guns to the people. And we'll let your media skew the story. And we'll stand fast. But enough's enough. I wish we would see more of that in this country. I wish we would see our people stand up to our government that way, under threat from the IRS or the BATF or whatever other group they want to throw at us when they try to steal our wealth. But we don't, because we have our bread and circuses. And it's disappointing. But it's refreshing to see this. To see these people finally stood up to. To see these people finally get a dose of their own medicine. And it's history. You can look up Romulo Betancourt, the president of Venezuela. The role the United States had for this country in World War II. And how they were one time our ally. Until we let a certain group of people take over. Who found out there was gold in them Nar Hills, as they say. And you watch, look in the news, Guyana's next, Suriname's next. And these little countries don't stand a chance against that group of people. And that's why there's going to be a war. Like, share, subscribe.